I gave myself 7 days to remake Call of Duty Zombies in Unity. The first thing I decided to do was make an environment. I really don't like walking around in grey box prototype environments, it just saps my motivation. I hopped onto the Unity asset store which thankfully for me is having a 50% off many asset sale right now. You can find affiliate links to all the assets I used in the project in the description below. Using those really helps me and my channel out so thanks to those of you who do. I picked up Sinti's low poly apocalypse pack. This pack is insane. It has loads of environment art characters, weapons, vehicles, nature, and it has this really kick-ass city environment that they'd set up which would be perfect for this kind of game, but I like pain, suffering, and practice. So I decided to remake a COD fan favorite that most definitely hasn't been remade enough. Here you can see me painfully placing hundreds of 5x5 ground tiles and Nuketown version 73 low poly was born. With a basic map in place, I slapped in a quick character controller using the ultimate character controller, which over the past week has become my favorite asset in history. But no matter how powerful it is, it can't magically spit out low poly arms to match my low poly environment, or can it? Uh, no, no, no it can't. So instead, I grabbed one of the characters that came with the Cinti Apocalypse pack and brought it into Blender where I proceeded to rip its arms from its body. Whilst I had Blender opened, I brought in a pistol which came from, uh, yeah, you guessed it, the Cinti Apocalypse pack. Then proceeded to spend many, many more hours than I had expected on creating a quip, unequip, and this mother reload animation for the arms and weapon. When the animations were finally done, I brought the character back into Unity and after some basic configuration with the ultimate character controller, I had a fully functional character with a weapon. I started exploring the map and realized how easy it was to escape. So to hinder all you escape artists out there, I added all of these invisible colliders around the map to lock the player in. But I have no doubt that if you try hard enough, you can escape. Whilst I do love Cincy's art, I freaking hate the fact that they use mesh colliders on everything. The collisions often act weird when mesh colliders are at play, so I did spend some time converting a lot of those to primitive shapes and that seemed to help with a lot of the weird collision stuff that was going on. Before I created some zombies to actually shoot at though, I decided to create a couple more animations for an SMG and assault rifle, and added the ability to pick them up and switch between them. I also added a melee attack which lets you stab the zombos. Now that I had some weapons, I needed some zombies to slay. I picked up the Sinti City Zombies pack which has 50 zombie characters in it and I used the mocap zombies animation pack to add some animations. I set the zombie up using the ultimate character controller which integrates nicely into Behavior Designer which is a tool for creating AI. By default, a third person AI character set up with the ultimate character controller has health assigned and on death ragdolls like a champ. Now, there are a bunch of animations in the Mopac Zombies pack, so I picked a few and I set up a few simple animators which each use different idle, attack, walking, or running animations. The zombie models and animations support Unity's humanoid avatar system, so they all play nicely together. I wrote a quick script that picks a random zombie model and assigns it one of the animators I created, which means that each time a zombie character is created, it will have a different model, and one of the four animators, which I think is a good and probably super lazy way of creating some variation, but time is not on my side here. Using Unity's navigation system, I generated a navigation mesh and through behavior designer, I told the zombie to seek out the player. And when they get within a range that I defined, they can perform an attack. And that is pretty much that for AI. Super complex, I know. ChatGPT better watch its back. The zombies did struggle a bit with climbing things at first and to solve this issue I had to add these invisible ramps all over the place so that the generated nav mesh would tell them that there is a path for them to walk on. The ultimate character controller has a nice system for tracking player attributes. I created an attribute to track the player's score and wrote a custom damage processor script that, well, processes damage and uses the damage to determine a score. If a zombie takes basic damage, you get 10 score. If you kill the zombie with a body shot, you get 70 score. And with a headshot, you get 100 score. And with a knife kill, you get 130 score. Cool, so now that you have score, you need something to do with it. 
I removed all the weapons I added from the player's default inventory except for the pistol, and used the Ultimate Character Controller's interaction system to have you purchase items and open doors using your score. I placed the SMG in this garage and placed the assault rifle inside this house. Now when you rack up enough score, you can buy things off the walls and open doors around the map. The next thing I wanted to do was add the basic power-ups that you could find in the card games. First up, insta-kill. I found a skull model in the Sensi pack and wrote a quick ability script that integrates into the ultimate character controller. The script activates an ability that lasts for 30 seconds when you collide with the skull. And the damage processor script I mentioned earlier checks if the ability is active whenever damage is dealt to a zombie. If it is, it deals damage equivalent to the remaining health of the zombie, causing it to die instantly. Next, I made max ammo, which acts as an item pickup and just fills your current ammo. Finally, the nuke, which simply finds all the active zombies in the scene and applies damage equivalent to their remaining health. The effect for this is actually super simple. When you pick the nuke up, the UI just displays a white texture that fades its alpha value back down to zero before disabling it. For its simplicity, I think it ended up looking pretty damn cool. The drop was super quick to add, which is nice considering I was already on four days of work at this point. Whilst things were moving along nicely, the environment did feel a little bland and like it was lacking some things. To improve it, I started adding VFX around the map. I added fire to these houses that you couldn't enter and to these sandbags that you couldn't jump over. I added sparks, fog and dust particles and boy did that make a difference. All these VFX come from the Epic Tune VFX pack and I also made use of an asset called MK Glow which is a post-processing shader plugin that makes glowing things really pop. Things were looking much better at this point, but one major thing that was lacking, sound. Again, I looked to the asset store for saving. I found the Universal Sound Effects Pack, the Ultimate Game Music Pack, and the Zombie Is Coming Sound Pack. I made use of Master Audio to manage all the sound in the game, which is a really powerful audio management asset, and it has good integration with the Ultimate Character Controller, so setting things up was pretty simple, albeit quite time consuming. I added ambient creepy rumbling noises to loop in the background and added some campfire sounds to all the areas that had fire burning. I added gun and reload sounds to the weapons and made the zombies grunt and grumble every so often. I also made them grunt when they attack or die. The player also grunts when taking damage. I also added some sound effects to the pickups which dramatically improves how impactful it feels to pick them up. The nuke is the best example of this. The rumbling explosion makes it feel awesome to pick up. To finalize the game gameplay loop, I had to write what was the most complex part of this project, the wave manager. At the start of the game, we give the player a couple of seconds to settle before starting the first wave. Six zombies spawn initially, and each round thereafter, three more zombies spawn in. Each time a new wave starts, the zombie needs to gain 100 health, and within each round, a maximum of four power-ups can spawn. At the start of each wave, we need to play an eerie sound to let the player know they're in cuck, and at the end of the round, we play a positive sound to let them know they did good. I added some UI to let the player know what wave they're on, how much score and ammo they have, and a damage indicator for when they take damage. I also added a main menu and a death screen for when the player dies. I used the Damage Pop-Up Pro asset to deal with the score pop-ups. This asset does exactly what you'd expect it to do, and I couldn't be happier with it. So whilst you enjoy the gameplay, I'll tell you my conclusion. I cannot describe how much fun it was making this game, especially after spending three months on a project trying to do everything myself. It really felt like I had taken a weight off my shoulders by relying more on the asset store. And the best thing about this is that I felt loads of fresh ideas coming to me as I worked on this. I had to force myself to keep true to cut and stick to my timeline. Not having to worry about how I'm going to create this art or that sound or any of those details gave my brain room to come up with sick ideas which I will probably create full games out of once I finish publishing this shameless copy of cut. Call it an asset flip if you will, but I don't think I'll be trying to make everything myself anytime soon again. I'll catch you on the next one.